Hi, how are you? Welcome to my kitchen, and today it is Chinese. We're going to talk about Chinese wine and Chinese cooking. I know that most of you don't think that there's uh, much going on in terms of the wine industry in China, but uh, it's very interesting to note that, that wine goes back to China, grape wine that they brought in from the West to the Han Dynasty. That means that uh, wine in China, grape wine in China, is prior to the Christian era. Uh, two, more than 2,000 years ago, they've been making wine from grapes. More commonly, they've been making wine I'm, I don't really like it. They've been making wine from um, grains such as rice and uh, soybean and sometimes sorghum. And I have three wines for you that we can talk about right now in terms of, of cooking with them. Uh, this one is a wine that is 59 proof. Buff. It's horrible stuff. Uh, and it's, uh, I think it's horrible because it's, it's, it's tougher than gin. But it's, it's nice in cooking, made a little bit with uh, a little bit of rice and a little bit of, of soybean. This middle one is a cooking wine, that is to say it has salt in it, but you can see how dark the color is. That's a rice wine that is um, a much less, high, much less uh, rich in alcohol and really good for cooking. And this one I must tell you about. It is made from the great dragon's eye grape. And I was introduced to this wine while in China one, one afternoon. How casual, Jeffrey. I was in Beijing a few months ago and uh, people said hello to me. They, they, not Chinese, of course, they didn't know the shows, but people from the States who were visiting there and I was in a very private dining room with a great meal and uh, a Chinese family was eating next to me. I was very excited. I couldn't understand a thing. And all of a sudden, a young fellow at the table stopped speaking in Chinese. He turned to me and he said, oh, I watch you every week in San Francisco. So that's what's happened to the frug. And he bought a bottle of great dragon's eye wine for me. It's really quite good. I don't know of any culture in the world that spends more time anticipating a meal than the Chinese. They are so ready to go for a meal. They, they spend... Uh, weeks and weeks and weeks thinking about a feast. And when it finally comes off, of course, it, it's absolutely great. Uh, you don't say to uh, someone in China, hi, how are you? That's, uh, that's Western thinking. In China, food is so important, a meal is so important, that when you say hello to someone, you say, qi fan yi mei yu, which means, have you eaten yet? Isn't that wonderful? And that's the way you say hi. Have you eaten yet? Come on, let's go eat. It's a wonderful thing. I have some devices for you that will help us understand how popular wine has been in the past in China. These are all treasures that uh, belong to our family. This, these grapes are, are made of jade from China. Aren't they gorgeous? The polish is just lovely. And this little bowl next to them is for drinking wine. And I have an old man's wine pot. This goes back to uh, the 12th century in China. It's a very, very old piece. And in the old days, the old man, this is not jade, this is pottery, but the old man would be uh, given this pot, and you know how it was done? They'd put either hot water in this pot or wine. And the servant would come into the, to the dining room, his best and most trusted servant, and would say, Lord, and he would set the pot down, but first the servant would pour some wine or some hot water from the pot himself, not tea, and he would taste it right in front of the old man. And then he would set it down and no one would touch the pot. Why? What were they worried about? Exactly, poison. They were worried about being poisoned. So here's a jade bowl uh, that we can use for drinking warm wine. Uh, a beautiful thing from China. I bought this in Beijing a few weeks ago. Isn't that lovely? This is the, the second hardest mineral in the world. Diamonds are harder. The only thing, and they use diamonds to cut these bowls. All right, on to cooking. Now, I think everything is in order if we can check on the kitchen god, because if the kitchen god is set, then we can cook. And the kitchen god, yes, he's ready. The kitchen god must always be present in a Chinese kitchen uh, so that uh, everything goes well. And at the end of the year, you burn the paper kitchen god, and he carries to heaven uh, all of the oils and wonderful flavors that you've, uh, that you've amassed in your kitchen during the year, and good things happen. So let's begin. The first dish I want to prepare for you today 
don't start laughing yet, but please remember that the Chinese have wonderful names for wonderful things. Uh, uh, this dish is called ants climbing up a tree. No, it is not made with real ants. Just calm down. It is made with, well, I'll show you. First of all, let me chop up some pork here while the oil's heating for our noodles. Uh, I have some pork we'll cut up. Oh, I want uh, three quarters of a pound. These th pieces have already been sliced. Whoops, I thought they'd been sliced. There they are. Now we found it. Okay. I'll slice up some pork, and I'm using my Chinese cleaver. This is a wonderful device. It's very, very sharp, and we want to chop this up into little sticks, and then we'll whack it a bit, and it'll turn into little bitty dots, and oh, those are going to become the ants. Actually, the ants are, are mushrooms on the, uh, on the little limbs of the tree, and we have to make the tree in just a minute as soon as my deep frying fat is hot. Okay. Isn't it fun? The noise is all right. We want to whack. When you use a cleaver, remember now, when it lands, it's got to land not on one end or this end, it's got to land flat. So learn to do this. And this is how you dice things in China. All right, enough of that. Now we want to do the same thing with oh, a couple cups of napa, or Chinese cabbage, sometimes called celery cabbage. Su choy, I think, is the proper name for this. We'll dice this up in a hurry. I love the noise. I love to do this kind of cooking. And finally, our most colorful ingredient, checking my oil here, uh, will, be, uh, will be Chinese mushrooms. And the Chinese mushroom is a wonderful thing. If you're on a vegetarian diet, please understand that unless you have Chinese mushrooms, you're missing uh, many precious amino acids that are normally found in meat. But Chinese mushrooms contain 19 of the 23 known amino acids and all the precious ones you find in meat. So buy some Chinese mushrooms, you see? They're the beautiful things. And when you soak them, when you soak them in water for a while, they, uh, they swell up beautifully. I've destemmed these, you see? They swell up beautifully. They are so rich and wonderful flavors and uh, easy to do, very easy to do. So let me uh, get our mushrooms ready to go here. I'm just going to use a few, and we'll chop them up so we have some ants. Because you see, the mushrooms have a dark brown look to them. And we'll, uh, we'll dice these up in little tiny pieces, and then they will function as the, the little pieces of, of uh, brown or dark color that will cling to the noodles and literally look like ants. This dish is very rich, and it's very delicious. Okay, I think we can get started. I don't know what I'd do with my towel. Here's one. Keep a towel handy so that you're not always wiping your hands in your apron. A gal in Des Moines, Iowa, wrote me a letter and said, Jeffrey, stop using your apron for your towel. I'm trying, ma'am, I'm trying. I'm trying to remember, for your sake and for mine. Now, we'll get our wok going. The wok, the Chinese frying pan, is a marvelous invention. It goes back to the Bronze Age. It was probably originally a helmet. Uh, and the fellows would cook uh, in their helmet uh, at night. Isn't that a kick? I'll sit around the campfire and start cooking away. Let's see if we can... Hmm. There we go. Sometimes the gas stove acts like a Methodist. I'm a Methodist, so I can say that it gets hot when it wants to, not when it should, you know? <laughs> there, we're ready. We'll heat up our wok now. We're going to marinate the meat, first of all, uh, in the basic Chinese marinade, which consists of a little bit of light soy, and light soy sauce is very different from the mud you buy in the supermarket. I don't want you to do that. You want two tablespoons of light soy sauce. You see, it looks more like, looks more like wine than, uh, uh, than anything else. You see how light it is? See that? Okay. Two tablespoons of light soy. And I want two tablespoons of Chinese wine, or it's perfectly all right to use uh, just dry sherry, dry cooking sherry, but I'm going to use two, two tablespoons of this Chinese um, distilled benzene. It's, this is a white one that's 59 proof. It's wild. But alcohol cooks out in food. Remember that. Uh, you're not going to have any alcohol in your food. Don't worry about it at all. Then I want some ginger, and I'm using fresh ginger, of course. Uh, you, can't use, uh, you can't use old ginger, old dry ginger in these dishes. It just won't work. Ah, the fat's up to temperature, so we're going to get the pork marinating in the three basic mm, ingredients of a good Chinese marinade. A little bit of wine, a little bit of soy, and a shot of ginger. And now we can go ahead. We'll check out our oil for the noodles. Where do you see these noodles? Yes, it's ready. Okay. Now, here's the fun part. These noodles 
are made from mung bean, or the same bean from which we grow bean sprouts. The starch is extruded through a tiny little um, hole in a metal uh, uh, press, you see, and, and then they're dry. But now watch what happens. If you soak them, they'll turn into what they call cellophane noodles. But watch what happens. I better be ready here, because you're going to have an explosion. I've got to have everything all set. Okay. My fire extinguisher is ready. Don't laugh. It's right here. Uh, these new ones don't even look like fire extinguishers. Firefighter puts these out. They're very handsome in your kitchen, but here's the fire extinguisher. So if anything goes wrong, I'm ready. Please don't cook without a fire extinguisher. It's, it's absurd. It's insulting. It's nasty. It's evil. It's wrong. All right. 375 degrees. I'm going to put about two ounces of noodles into the wok. Now watch what will happen. It's really very dramatic. And it is done. Did you get that? Wow! Jeffrey, you amaze me. I think it's pretty nice. I'll drain them now on paper towels, and they will become the trees for our uh, ants climbing up a tree. Or if you want to have fun with these, you can also um, chop, put chopped lamb on them, and then you call lamb in its own wool. The Chinese have wonderful names for these things. Isn't that fun? Okay, let's saute the... The, the wok is very hot now. So we're going to put in our, a little bit of peanut oil. Don't try and cook with uh, other oils in a wok. You want peanut oil because it will withstand high temperatures. We're going to put in the marinated pork, that is to say pork and a little bit of, of light soy, sherry or Chinese wine, and some ginger. Already the place smells like a first-class Chinese restaurant. Wonderful fun. We'll let that chow for just a minute. Then we'll add our remaining ingredients. And we want to add a bit of napa to this, the, cha the cabbage that I've already told you about. And we're going to put some garlic in first, of course. While the meat's cooking, let's throw the garlic in right now, huh? Where's my paddle? Here it is. You know, I'm doing something very dangerous here in front of you. We might as well talk about it. This pot full of oil, which is next to the, my wok, you see, is very, very hot. And if I splash something into this pan, from this pan, it's going to be all over. So I think I just better remove that right now while my, uh, while my pork's getting hot, huh? While the pan's getting up to temperature. There we go. Put this in a very safe place where no one's going to come near it. And warn all the kids, stay out of the kitchen when I'm deep frying, right? Very important. All right, the pork is just about done. And we want to throw in our couple cloves of garlic. It doesn't take long to cook pork this way because you've, you've cut it into such small pieces, you see. It's very easy to do this. Okay. There. Garlic, garlic, garlic. I love it. The Chinese have eaten garlic for thousands of years. And it's hard for me. No, I haven't figured out where garlic first came from. It, uh, it appears in many cultures at many times. The mushrooms go in now. And the napa, or the celery cabbage. And then we want to add some green onions. I'm going to just whack up four or five. You know, I'll just dice them up in a hurry. Remember, keep those fingers bent under. I don't have to keep telling you that, do I? Maybe so, I don't know. And we'll toss that for a bit now. Ouch, the pan's hot. Use a pot holder. You notice that I just have my wok sitting right on my burner. I'm not worrying about uh, I'm not worrying about it banging around too much. It seems to be doing all right, looking good. The onions are in. Now we need to add some hot bean sauce, and you'll find hot bean sauce in any Chinese market. Uh, it's um, I'm going to use uh, oh, a couple little teaspoons, I think, maybe a tablespoon if you're really into it. It's very very hot stuff. It comes from Sichuan, region of China, uh, and it's utterly delicious. And to that, now we're going to add a, just a pinch of sugar to cut down on the sharpness of our dish. Make it a little bit richer. Just a pinch of sugar. There we go. And a pinch of black pepper. Of course. Pepper with pepper sauce? Oh, well, this is not a mild dish. This is a good one. Okay, and some... We'll thicken that now with a bit of cornstarch and water. I've mixed two tablespoons of cornstarch with two tablespoons of water. And I'll just throw that in. Oh, my eyes are beginning. 
Ah, oh, my eyes are burning from the pepper sauce. No, if you don't like spicy foods, for heaven's sakes, cut down on the amount of, of um, hot bean sauce that you... Can you see this? I can't even see you. Don't put in so much hot bean sauce if you're uh, down on that. What was I looking for? Uh, I want some uh, cornstarch and water. That's what I want. To make it kind of a light sauce. And this will sort of do it itself, you see. It thickens itself like gravy train. <laughs> Sorry. Cornstarch and water is a wonderful thing because it doesn't taste uh, quite as pasty as flour and water will taste. Okay. And now a shot of sesame oil. And please, when you buy sesame oil, remember to buy it from a good oriental market. Don't buy it from a health food store because it, it hasn't been toasted. They're selling you fresh um, sesame oil, and we don't want that. All right, the dish is completed. Did you get all of those ingredients? If you don't have the ingredients down pat, don't worry about it. You can find all of the ingredients for all of the recipes we do on this show in uh, our uh, book called uh, The Frug Cooks with Wine. Now I'll turn down my gas and I'll find my big platter of noodles. That's not big enough, is it? Let's get a great big plate. Oh, uh, I don't see the big plates. They disappeared. Well, we'll use this one. Mm. And we'll put the, ah, uh, you see, put the noodles right on the top of the, I'll put the food right on the top of the noodles, then I'll show how it's eaten. It's a really very interesting dish. It's, it's spicy and delicious. I see if you, if you, if you thin the sauce down a bit, I probably should throw in a little more wine. The little uh, pieces of meat and things will, will cling to the twigs and therefore you, see, you call it ants climbing up a tree. Isn't that a kick? I just love it. It's a very dramatic dish, and it is served there. It is served in uh, lettuce leaves. I'll show you how it's done. Let me rinse out my wok first. The wonderful thing about cleanup in a Chinese kitchen is that you just rinse out the wok. Don't ever put soap in your wok once you cure it. You don't want, to, uh, you don't want things to be sticking. All right, now let me get some leaves for you. And the lettuce leaves allow you to make, oh, we need something for color. Do you know what the color is that you should use here? Red, because red is the sign of happiness and wealth in China. So at a great dinner party, you would always have something that was red on the table. And at a wedding party, of course, you have to give the bride and groom something that's red. And what you do is take a bit of the filling and you, you wrap it up in lettuce leaves like a burrito. Did the Chinese invent the burrito? You just bet they did. I know that to be true. Using vegetables and, and pancakes, too. Long time ago. You put a bit of the noodle and the meat right in the side of this. Oh, it's so good. Then roll this up. Of course, you have to make a big mess like I've just done. Roll this up like a burrito, and it is eaten thusly. You see? I'll just leave this one on the side so you can remember. All right, let's go on to another one. I'm, uh, oh, oh, let me go back. I want to show you one other thing. Let's garnish this with some little creatures. I may just do one dish for you today. I don't know, I'm having too much fun. I have other things ready, of course. Since it's made of pork, let's put some piggies on it. I've made these from antique Chinese cutters. We'll put a piggy on it. Let's put two piggies on him. And uh, here's a sign for song, song hei. Let's get a one from a carrot. Song, song he, which means double happiness. Song he, the theme is repeated, you see, in the center. And here's one for longevity. That should be enough so that everyone understands when they come to the table that we're, uh, we're talking about serious food here in China. We're not messing around. Let's go on to one more that's, uh, again, the same kind of noodle. I think you'll enjoy this very, very much. This is called a glass noodle dish because we're going to soak the noodle first and then we'll cook it with, uh, with other vegetables. So we'll get our wok going first of all with some pork. We'll marinate the pork in our basic three ingredients. This should be enough. I'm just going to cut this one into strips. And uh, I'm just going to marinate it right in the old pot. We'll just throw everything in all at once. It doesn't matter. I've cut these steaks into um, thin slices, these strips, you see. And so now the meat can be quickly sliced straight across the grain. And we'll get some peated oil in there first of all, of course. Remember hot wok, cold oil, foods won't stick? Remember the rule? It's a very important rule. Big fat sticks to your skin like, uh, what was it that Laurel and Hardy were always trying to get rid of? A piece of tape on their pants. Remember, they couldn't get away with it. All right, we'll cook the pork and add our, we want a shot of 
light soy. And we want a bit of fresh ginger. And of course some sherry or wine. Dry sherry or Chinese wine. And that will make our beginning flavor for this dish. And it's very simple. Well, let's see, this time we'll just use some sherry. I don't want you to think you have to spend a lot of money on these cooking wines. You don't, on wines for cooking. I shouldn't say cooking wine. I don't mean cooking wine. Don't buy wines with salt in them. A little bit of sherry. We'll bring that up to heat while we get our remaining ingredients ready. There we go. Now, we're going to add, get back in the pot, piggy. You know, piggies are very intelligent animals. We shouldn't, we shouldn't malign them the way we do. It's just terrible. I need some dried shrimp. And I've soaked the shrimp. I can find the dried stuff. Here it is. The dried shrimp, um, it doesn't change its size much when you soak them, but the flavor is just marvelous. This is called developed. This one is developed. They, they bring it back to life by soaking it in water. The Chinese know more about drying foods than just about anybody in the world. I'm sure that's another one of those marvelous processes that they invented. So we're going to leave the salty water behind and put the drained shrimp into the pot. Oh, so good, so good, so good. There we are. And while that cooks up a bit, we'll get the rest of our vegetables ready. And it's, this is not a complicated one, I, I assure you. So uh, you can always do these. We want a little bit of chopped mushroom. And notice I'm draining the mushroom by squeezing it a little bit. I don't want to be too wet. And we'll get our mushrooms ready. I'm just slicing these into sticks. And we'll want a bit of yellow onion. That should be ample. Boy, that's slippery. Come here, you rascal. Let me show you one more trick about Chinese cooking. It's time now to take the meat from the pan, and I don't want to, um, uh, I don't want to bother with uh, a clean dish each time, so I'm just going to put it in the dish in which I'm going to serve it, and the dish has a fish, in, a fish pattern in it, you see. That means that uh, we are to wish everybody abundance and good things. There. All right. Now we will saute the onions and mushrooms that I've already prepared for you in the wok along with a bit of garlic. We'll just slice a couple of cloves of little garlic right in the old pan here. There. The odors, you know, this is so familiar for me. It, it's just, it's wonderful to know that, uh, that these things belong to a culture that is so old. The Chinese were probably the first cooks in the world. We think that baking man was the first one to ever cook a piece of meat, and that's that's 100,000 years ago, I think. And he probably did it over a fire with a stick. And he probably had to use a piece of meat that was too large to eat by himself, so he had to invite someone in. So that was the first Chinese restaurant. Wasn't it? I think so. I think so. All right, the onions are cooking. Let's throw in a couple of green onions. And then we'll take all of this out and put in our noodles for the clothes here. There we are. I think that's doing fine. This is very comfortable odor for me. I, I so love this kind of cuisine that I can't believe it. Now, the, the noodles are the same noodles that I've just cooked for you, but this time we're going to use noodles that have been soaked. And once you soak them up, you see, like this, rather than deep frying, we're going to put them in broth. I'm going to add two cups of broth to that chicken, good chicken broth. You can see I've made my own because it's very thick and nice. And we'll bring that to a boil. And by the time it boils, the noodles will be done. And then we'll add our ingredients back into the wok and serve it. Now while that's finishing, I have one more in the oven I want you to see. There, I, need to, I think I need to put a lid on that, huh, so that it will keep the, uh, keep the moisture in. And bring it to a simmer here. I have one in the oven that you're going to love. This is a very unusual dish. I may not have time to give you all the ingredients, but I'll show you how it's done. Better yet, I'll give you the story. There. This dish <laughs> has been cooking for six hours. And it is called pork cooked for six hours, or uh, slow-cooked pork. What you do is marinate the pork in the basic three ingredients. 
uh, of the, the pork and the, sh and, uh, and the sherry and a little bit of, uh, of uh, soy, you see. And then we added a bit of sugar and some pepper and some sherry. I said sherry, I'm sorry. Ginger, mainzi, which is a, a fermented bean paste. You can find that in my cookbook or in any Chinese market. Some green onions and a wonderful a little item called star anise. And the star anise is a lovely little creature. I can't even put my hands on any. Here it is. This is what makes it. This gives it a flavor of licorice. You see, these look like little stars. Here's one that looks like a star. See, aren't they beautiful? It's a wonderful product. And this is so tender, not the star anise, but the meat itself is so tender that all you need to do is just barely poke it with a fork and it will just fall apart and you didn't even have to stand in the kitchen. I learned this from a gal uh, who came from Taiwan and was a student when I was a chaplain years ago at the university. And she always joined the peace marches and all and she always had dinner ready at night and it's because she could cook like this. She knew her stuff. All right, the noodles are... I've got too much water on that, too much broth. I, what I, what's really happening is that I don't have time to finish the dish. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull a nasty on you and take out some of the broth. And then put in our mushrooms and goodies. And we'll finish that with a couple of eggs. And serve siphon or glass noodles. Do you see what's happened to them? They're not quite finished yet, but you see, now they're beginning to look like glass instead of, of like, um, what would you call it? Instead of the wool type, you see? Well, stir a couple of eggs into that too, and then you'll be all set. So there it is, cooking in China. Um, you, you've got to enjoy food, but have your person at the table first, because the old line is, better a man should wait for a dish than the dish wait for a man. And in China, that's true. Till I see you again, this is the Frugal Gourmet. Enjoy yourself. I bid you peace. Bye-bye.